Oh, really? oh, okay. Well, that's very that's very bold of you. You're saying you agree with everything your boss says. You will be surprised. It's, it, you will be surprised to know that yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, so, can you just give us if there is any update an update on uh, both the situation with the aid trucks and with trying to get people out of Rafa? Um, let me start with the aid trucks. So, as I mentioned, you know, uh, around 45 went in yesterday. I think it was actually at least 45. Might have been a few more than that that made it through. Um, for a total, as of yesterday, of at least 175 trucks that moved through Rafa Crossing by end of day yesterday. Another 59 have moved today. Sorry, that, that was when? since they reopened, which I think was the 21st since Rafa reopened. Um, another 59 have gone through today, which of course means more went through today than went through yesterday. We are tr continuing to try to increase the number that make it through Rafa every day. So we have sustained deliveries of humanitarian assistance to the uh, innocent civilians in, in Gaza with, um, uh, and are trying, as the Secretary said on the Hill today, to get up to 100 trucks a day. Um, okay, but in terms of people coming out of, uh, of Gaza, it's like one-way traffic going in, right? It's, you still haven't gotten any, uh, uh, none, of the, none, none of the American citizens so that, are, that you're aware of have been able to get out through Rafa. They have not been able to get out um, as of yet. I will say that we are making very good progress on this issue. You may see, have seen some reports uh, that have moved uh, from the region just in the last few hours about the possibility of Rafa Gate opening tomorrow. Uh, we have been intensely focused on this. As you know, the Secretary called the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Qatar yesterday to talk to him about um, impressing upon Hamas the need to make this happen. Um, Ambassador Satterfield has been intensely engaged on the question. The President, have co of course, has been involved in it as well. Um, I'm not in the position to make any announcements as I stand here right now, but I would say that we would welcome any agreement that would permit the safe exit of American citizens, uh, families, other foreign nationals. Um, it's our understanding that should we get there, it's not a process that would incur, uh, would occur instantly. People would move out over several days. So while I can't get into any further details at this point, I would say that all of the American citizens who are in Gaza should continue to register with the State Department and look out for any announcements from us. And as soon as we have any actual information, we will make it available to them. Are you, are you, you know, you know, 10 days ago when we were out in the region, we were hearing the same thing. Oh, yes, it'll be open. The Egyptians mm -hmm. are waiting for them. And then it never happened. And are you more confident today than you I, were I, back with, then? With all of these things, I want to wait and see it actually happening. I like, as I said, there are reports that Rafa Gate will open tomorrow. Right. Uh, I'm not, and, 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 would... but I know that's what I said. I'm not in a position to confirm those reports as of yet. I will say that we are intensely focused on getting the gate open, not just for one-way traffic of trucks coming in, but for American citizens and other foreign nationals coming. Can't make any announcements to get today, but we have made good progress on this, even in the past few hours, um, and and hope to keep making progress to get those American citizens okay. out. Um, last one. Uh, yesterday, I gave you a little bit of grief about the amount of humanitarian aid that you had uh, pledged for uh, Gaza, being 100 million at the time. There was more that the secretary testified. And Secretary Austin also testified to this morning. Can you be a little bit more explicit about how much you're asking for from Congress for, for Gaza specifically? I can't say Gaza specifically. What I can speak to is the request that we made in the supplemental package that the President requested, which is for a total of $9.2 billion in additional humanitarian assistance. Of that $9.2 billion, 5.7 billion is for USAID, and it would go to uh, affect. Uh, it would go to, to fund USAID assistance programs in Ukraine and uh, other areas affected by the war in Ukraine and Gaza. I can't break down the 5.7 well, well, billion okay. because we have because because the money hasn't been allocated yet. It has to be funded, then it has to be allocated, and USAID would make those decisions based on needs on the ground when we get there. Um, but I can tell you that there's a 5.7 billion dollar request. Um, some significant subset of that money would go to humanitarian assistance in Gaza. Okay, but you, you will accept that that's still a drop in the bucket compared to what you are asking for and what you're already giving 
to Israel. Uh, again, it, it is a smaller number than what we're giving to Israel, but uh, you have to remember that we are not the only one, as I said yesterday, that is funding humanitarian assistance um, uh, to Gaza. There are other countries uh, in the region as well that are contributing, and we will hope that others will do more. Thank you.